The witching hour has arrived. It's two o'clock and I hereby call the October meeting of Residence Council to order. Thank you all for being here. <coughs> Nancy, could I ask you to give an invocation? Veterans Day is just around the corner, so we stop and pause and think about the veterans of our country. There's so much turmoil going on in the world. We have to think of the whole world at this time. I was reminded of the wonderful um, TV series, Band of Brothers, which many of us probably watched. And I never knew the words to the very moving song that was played throughout it. And I recently came across them and thought I'd share them. It's called Requiem for a Soldier. You never lived to see what you gave to me. One shining dream of hope and love, life and liberty with a host of brave, unknown soldiers for your company, you will live forever in our memory. In the fields of sacrifice, heroes paid the price. Young men who died for old men's wars, gone to paradise. We are all one great band of brothers, and one day you'll see all you gave to me, your shining dream of hope and love, life and liberty. We are all one great band of brothers, and one day you'll see we can all live together when all the world is free. <clears throat> Thank you, Nancy. Our executive director, Amy Chapman, is off on a CARF survey. It's something we went through last spring, but our executive associate director is here to bring remarks. Associate executive director, Kate Siler. Good afternoon, everyone. So as Ann said, I'm Caitlin Seiler, I'm the Associate Executive Director, um, and I'll be doing the report today from administration in Aveen's absence. So as far as our occupancy goes, we are 89% occupied and 94% occupied and reserved and independent. Our marketing team is working diligently to fill as many apartments as possible. We've had an open house event on the 21st of this month, which, have hi which highlighted some of our available one-bedroom apartments. As far as our move-ins go, we have six scheduled for October, five for November, six for December, and even one already for January. So our marketing team is definitely working very hard. As far as turnover, our 90-day turnover rate was 12%, which was a 2% improvement from last month. We've recently changed our orientation process and will pay close attention to how it may affect our retention status. A COVID update regarding vaccinations. So we recently had our vaccination clinics, clinics which were a great uh, success. We had 171 independent living residents receive the flu vaccine and 196 residents received the COVID vaccine in independent living. In health services, we had 125 residents receive the flu vaccine and 113 received the COVID vaccine. Our team members were also offered the opportunity to receive their vaccinations on campus. From a finance update for quarterlies, our income did not meet the budget for the month of September due to the number of vacancies in independent living and the number of apartments and cottages in the midst of turnover. We were able to come in under expenses for a four month, fourth month in a row, and our leadership team continues to work diligently to ensure that we are conservative with expenses and to make up for our income shortfall. Our point of sale system um, update, so our dining team continues to get more familiar with the point of sale system. We are hopeful to be able to add the option to check meal counts to our Touchtown app so that balances may be checked remotely within the next few weeks. More info to come as soon as it's available. 
area meetings. So our first area meeting with department directors went well. In total, 183 residents attended the meetings. The purpose is to create an atmosphere for exchange of information in a small group setting between the residents and the departments that they are scheduled for with that month's meeting. Check the informer for the date and department rotation with areas. The times and locations of these meetings will also be provided in advance so that you may save the dates on your calendar. If you are unable to attend your meeting, you may reach out to the area representative of another area and attend theirs. An update on Atrium Cafe. The amazing Atrium Cafe team has worked to get the cafe opened and they are ready for business. New menu options and milkshakes are already a big hit. For those who have not tried the milkshake, you are missing out. And for those who are counting calories, don't bother. <laughs> Alzheimer's Walk, we are putting together the details for the walk on November 4th. For more information, please see Carol Thompson in Wellness. Now that we met our financial goal, our participation goal is to have 100 walkers representing Cedarfield. We are all excited to show how Cedarfield proud we are at the walk and are hoping to have a big crowd of residents, team members, family, and friends join us. And that is my report. Are there any questions? <coughs> all right, thank you guys. With Caitlin's arrival, and she sometimes goes by Kate, and with Caitlin here, we're running into some confusion from time to time about who is doing what. So pay particular attention to who we're asking things from. It is getting close to the holiday season and Sally Ayers has agreed, Sally Ayers has agreed to uh, raise the funds for the holiday gift and will be giving us a report right now. Sally, thanks. It's the Sally Sally team. <laughs> Yes, uh, you can just say Sally around here this, this fall and, and one of us will answer, I'm sure. So I am Sally Ayers and I am honored and privileged to have been asked to, uh, to chair this uh, campaign this year because it's such an important event to raise donations for our amazing team members. I follow in the footsteps of some really inspiring residents who've done this in the past, Tony and Sandy Puccinelli, who did a wonderful job last year, and Ravi, and a host of others over the past 27 years who have stood up here and asked for donations to thank our team members for their dedicated daily service to us. Uh, those of you that have been here for a while know why we do this, but if you're new to Cedar Field, uh, this may be a new thing for you to consider. I want to just share a short story with you. Five years ago, my husband and I decided to make a move to a continuing care community. We had both cared for aging parents in Pennsylvania while we were living in Southern Maryland. It was a long six hour drive every time there was a crisis and unfortunately there were many of them for about four years. Kermit's mother was blessed to be in a great assisted care home surrounded by caring workers until she passed. My father, however, bounced through five different facilities, ranging in various degrees of skilled care and some good, some very mediocre. So we found, um, we found the full range and we did finally find a, a caring place for him for his final days. So um, it was a stressful time for us. So when we began to think about our own aging process and our daughter, who was living in Richmond, eight hours away from us in Pennsylvania, we didn't want to put her through that challenge. And so we decided that it would be better for us to be closer to her and to make the move sooner rather than later. And we're so glad we did because we can enjoy all the wonderful things about Cedarfield while we're not having to experience the health care needs. But we know that may be down the road for us. So we gave up our Yankee roots and we're using y'all a whole lot more and <laughs> settling in here. Um, and because we knew what we were looking for, uh, we did a lot of research, like most of you did, and looking at a lot of different places to find the best spot. So when we moved to Cedarfield, 
we just felt like we had hit the jackpot. We knew we didn't have to worry for our daughter's family, and we just feel so incredibly blessed to be here, surrounded by such a caring team of people. There is such an atmosphere of hope and positivity that radiates from all the residents. I, I walk through the halls and see smiling faces all the time. I just love that. Um, but I think that is so much inspired by the team members who care for us in so many ways, directly and indirectly, uh, through each of our, our days here. I'm sure each one of us probably has a list of favorite team members and ways that they've touched our lives, and I wouldn't begin to mention mine or we'd be here for a long, long time. But as I think of the ones that are my favorites, I, I'm also acutely aware of the ones behind the scenes that I may never see, maybe not know their names, but they do also make a daily difference in what happens in the life of all of us here at Cedarfield. As you look around, consider all of them, 355 people who work every day on our behalf. Consider how many ways they impact your life each and every day. So the month of November has always been a month of gratitude with Thanksgiving, so it's a really appropriate time for us to gather and pool our resources in appreciation for a year of dedicated work by the Cedarfield team. So beginning Wednesday, November 1st, we'll each have a chance to show our appreciation to them by writing a generous check to Cedarfield Resident Association. The campaign will close on December 1st, and then we will honor them on December 7th, and Sally will talk more about that, the holiday party, which is always sponsored by the residents. So this is when they will receive their checks which are divided according to how much time they work full-time or part-time. Some say, give till it hurts. We'd rather that you consider giving till it feels real good. <laughs> so look for letters in the next few days, uh, probably by Monday in your mailboxes with the details for where to look for the gift boxes. And you'll receive some reminders over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and also some reminders on Touchtown, so you know um, where to put your gifts, and we certainly hope that uh, you can remember these team members uh, with generosity this year. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sally. Remember, this is the one time in every 365 days that we can give something to these wonderful team members who work for us so hard all year long. We can't do it any other day of the year. And then for the actual party, Sally Wood and Grace Ann Miller are co-chairing it and Sally's gonna give us the tickets. And it is December the 7th, and all of you in this room, I think, have been involved with uh, cooking or donation of additional money to buy some, some additional food if you're not in a position to cook. This is the year where the odd team, sounds like college, odd team prevails, meaning if you live in an apartment that uh, ends, or a, a cottage that ends in an odd number, one, three, five, seven, nine, you're gonna be on the hook this, this year to make something or date or donate money to Alvira. Um, now, I did some counting that the difference between the odd and the evens uh, units is 20. So we're already, already at a deficit going into this thing. I believe that we attacked that earlier in the past years because one year we ran out of food because of that very thing. But we asked odd people, uh, yeah, odd people, <laughs> you, you odd folks, um, to just double up what you're cooking or the money you go give in, in lieu of cooking. But that doesn't take care of another problem, and you address this, um, the fact that we have a lot of empty cottages and apartments. Now, I was informed earlier that it really represented about 28 units, whether that's you know, scientifically correct, I can't tell you, but I relied on that figure. Now, those folks are gonna be slowly creeping in here, very few in October, very few in November, some in December, 
they're not going to be real interested in cooking. They probably, as you well know, can't even find anything to cook in or with. Uh, so I am going to ask some people who are living in even number apartments or cottages to cook something. And um, I think it's like, this isn't in my minutes, but um, I think it's like this. If you ever been part of a church or a synagogue where they're coming after you for money, you know, you're supposed to be giving them the money, don't wait for me to come to after you. Just let me know you can cook something. I think if I get about 20-ish people, I'll be okay. But the worst, problem, the worst thing would be we'd run out of food. Now, the, the other worst thing is we don't give this Sally enough money to make all our team members happy. So that's it. Thank you. I think with the Sally Sally team, we're going to have a wonderful fun drive and party. And all of us who've been to the party know how wonderful it is. The team members appreciate so much the fact that we do all of the cooking and the serving and the cleaning up. We have a few team members help us, but it's pretty much rest of run. Denise Pakula, are you here to talk about the shop at 2300? Yes, you are. And I heard somebody yesterday talking about how much money she's spending down in the, in the shop. So let's keep it up. Okay. Hello, everybody. The shop at 2300 is gearing up for a very successful holiday season. So be on the lookout for holiday jewelry, napkins, coasters, and if you haven't checked out our new coasters that are absolutely hysterical, they are limestone, so they will not, they're made of limestone, so they will absorb the liquid from your glasses, so there's no marks on the tables. We will also have lots more coming. We have new stone wall kitchen jams and jellies, crackers, punch mix that you can drink as is or spike it up a little. And all of this will be on display very soon. I want to thank everybody for helping to make our shop so successful. It's been wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, if you are interested in volunteering at the shop, and we have very short, let's see, they go from about an hour and a half shift and it's a lot of fun. You get to meet residents you may not get to know um, on, in passing. And it's also fun to be down there and just to chat with your, with your fellow residents. So thank you again and come shop with us. The residents have done a super job opening the shop in April and getting it up and running and just wonderful things in there to buy. So keep supporting the shop. Charlotte Bailey, are you here to talk about that one? Come Hello. Can you hear? Oh, well, that's unusual. I've got a big mouth. Um, our October meeting will be Friday. You've heard all about this, but you're going to hear it again. October the 27th at 10 in the Fellowship Hall. It will be the fall state meeting, and we will be electing state officers. All the VACRA members are encouraged to attend and to vote, particularly for Martha Cole Glenn as the state vice president in charge of legislative matters. Since we are the largest chapter in the state, we hope that we will be represented by Martha Cole on this very, very important committee. Our November, oh, by the way, after you vote, you don't have to stay. 
for this evening. You know, if you have an appointment or something better to do, you'll be excused, you can just leave. But you have to be there for the hand count vote. As I've said to you before, we're not allowed absentee ballots. We're not allowed any proxies. And we have to put that count in. And the meeting is going to be by Zoom. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to put the count in on the Zoom thing. And Barbara and Katrin and Eddie will be there in case I mess it up, I'm sure. Our November meeting will be on Friday, November the 17th, and will be a member appreciation breakfast and will also include new residents who will be introduced to VAFRA and to our mission. They'll have the opportunity to ask questions and to socialize and interact with our members. We're not going to have a meeting in December. And in January, we will lose two officers, Barbara Fiske and Martha Cole Glenn. And we gain two new ones, Francis Aiken and Bob Staples. We'll also gain Roger Dowdy as program chairman who will develop our educational programs. It would, just moving on to a completely different topic, it would be very helpful if residents who are moving from the cottage to the big house or from apartment to apartment or to a different level of care, if you would use this VACRA membership form to change your address we're still getting the newsletters and any information for you if you have moved it's coming to your old address so if you could change your address that would be very very helpful you've received your newsletters lots of good information in that newsletter uh, and I want to point out the, chest, the uh, Cedarfield mentors if, if you haven't read that article please do. Another featured article is the SCC Bureau of Insurance has, in, has revised the website so it's really user friendly now and really great for us seniors. Please read your newsletter. If you have a friend, a neighbor, anybody, who, who is not a member of VACRA, share your newsletter with them. Maybe they will be interested and become a member. Spread the good news. The last bit of VACRA news is that Jerry Simonoff will be our represent one of our representatives on the VACRA State Board. Sylvia Fine will continue on the board and Barbara Rose will continue serving on the legislative committee. And I think that's all I got. <laughs> Any questions? Comments? No? Anybody want to join? <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. We had a meeting last month, and do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the September meeting? Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, and just a reminder, because we will do some voting much later in the meeting, those who are eligible to vote are either the primary uh, area rep or the committee chairs of the 13 committees and officers of, of residence council. Those of us are the ones ready to vote. Uh, we have now brief committee reports. The full minutes of committees will be attached to your minutes, but we ask committee chairs to report on the most important things that have come before their committee, starting with communications, Vivian. Well, the communications committee has two uh, big items 
continuing items on our agenda. Two big continuing items on our agenda, um, and these are signs and maps. <laughs> um, you may recall, if you've been here a while, that there was a lot of discussion about um, signage in the big house, and this is, you know, a couple of years ago or more, and nothing really came of it. Um, it dropped out of the budget. Well, we're trying to get it back in, and we have um, hoping that the um, sign there will be a signage uh, committee so that residents can have a um, offer a perspective on things like the clarity and the placement of the signs and where signs are needed. Um, although the, it is a uh, function of maintenance to actually install signs, um, the committee feels strongly that the resident perspective in terms of height of placement and so forth and so on, that these are important aspects of, um, for, or important uh, items to attend to in order to make the signs actually effective. There is some um, commentary that we need better external signs as well. So right now, there's not a whole lot if you're coming in as a visitor to tell you where to go for what purposes. The other big item we're talking about is maps. Um, and this is an ongoing conversation about whether or not we need maps of the big house that would tell people where the activity rooms are, what, where the various departments are, and so forth and so on. Right now, we, that is to say, the Communications Committee, has a subcommittee, um, Phyllis Katz, Chuck Bingley, and Dolly Hintz, who are going to draft um, an area map so we know I mean, maps mean many things to many people. And once we have a prototype of what kind of map we're talking about, we're going to have a uh, resident survey on how useful or desirable such maps might be, for both for residents and for visitors. So those are the two big items. Um, we also, you know, there are weekly updates available. Um, Apparently, the people who pick them up in the mail room are very familiar with this. They go like hotcakes, so to speak. Um, the ones that in the, are in the dining room have not been picked up as much. They were put in the dining room for the convenience of people living in cottages, but we don't have a good place to display them in the dining room. Um, you have to actually look pretty hard to find where you might pick one up. So we're trying to uh, get a better location for that. Otherwise, um, the, the topics are covered in the minutes. Any questions? Yes. Wait for the microphone. I just want to make sure I clearly heard you about the sign situation. Did I hear you say that that had been dropped from the budget? Yes. And um, this, of course, was before Amy was here. And um, my understanding of her intention is that we will get this back in progress. Well, that was really sad news to hear, and I will say no more about it. Well, my understanding is that the um, there was it was budgeted and budgeted and nothing happened, and so it was taken out. And I don't know if that's correct or not, but um, in any event, we are. It is not a dead topic. Just another question. Mm -hmm. And I have written a note to ask Lacey where the signage project is because. I've lived here over three years, and it's been a topic of discussion for over three years. I'd like to correct the fact that there has been some work, not complete for sure. There was nothing and nothing and nothing. A committee was put together, went all around uh, long before uh, she came. And there were new signs, finally, 
put up by each of the elevators because some of the little things were not there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no harbor anymore. There is a uh, flower room located on the seventh floor. And there are other changes. And a larger sign was put, put there. The bad news is the old one was left there, which is very confusing. <laughs> Yes. So it's good news, bad news. But yes, there has been something done. I'm happy that it's going to continue. Thank you. Um, I didn't mean to imply that nothing has happened, but that it never came to completion. So thank you for the clarification. Anything else? Okay, see you next time. <laughs> How amazing that Eldon realized that the flower room got named. Um, <laughs> Dining committee is going to be reported by Frank Miller. Ravi took a well-deserved trip this past month, so I get to report. There were really only two things that were discussed at the last dining committee meeting. The first one, Caitlin has already spoken of. There were milkshakes in the atrium now. Does anybody didn't know that? <laughs> Nobody's been in a closet for the last month then. Uh, the second one is there continues to be an interest in whether we could have a cocktail lounge at Cedarfield. So sometime uh, shortly you will be receiving, receiving a questionnaire and it will simply ask uh, would you have interest in having a cocktail lounge and how might you use it. So. Watch for those, uh, what they're trying to determine is the amount of interest, and then there are quite a bit we have to do to determine if we can justify the expenses to, to do that. Any questions? Thank you. Sally Sessoms is out of town, but asked me to make one note about the gardening committee. The calendars for 2024 this year are being printed as they receive the orders. So if you've already ordered yours, you've probably already received them. Uh, and somebody who received them said, oops, I now realize I need three more. So it's a great way they're being printed. The boxes are still around the campus. If you'd like to order your um, calendar for 2024, please feel free to do so. Library, Sally Wood. I had unfortunate news that two of our wonderful volunteers had to resign, and that would be Laura Lennox and Perky Bryan. And Laura Lennox has been working for years now in the Balcony Library, which some of y'all might understand that over the years, it doesn't have a budget for buying any books. It only gets donated books. And so over the years, it became rather cluttered with generous gifts, but a decision had to be made. You know, how will we uh, uh, call, call the uh, sacks? Um, and so Laura just put in an exorbitant amount of time trying to figure a philosophy of how to get rid of books that might have been wonderful books, but just were not serving a useful purpose upstairs. And um, now, I, I, I have an analogy. If you go to Macy's sometimes, you can't find any clothes because there's so many in the racks. Or you might go to, I don't know, another kind of shop like Saks Fifth Avenue, and you can see these little gems. They're in the racks. So now you can see some gems up in the balcony, thanks to Laura. And um, she really has try to find the definitive example of a certain book. And a lot of books in the, in the balcony are military or war-oriented. And then, of course, Perky Ryan, what I, can, I don't need to say anything. Everybody loves Perky. She brings such joy to us all and did in the library. She continues to work, but she's just too conscientious to say I'm going to be chair. And we have, um, to thank her so much for what she brought to us in the library and what she continues to bring to us. And we call both uh, Laura and Perky the Cedarfield Energizer Library Bunnies on steroids. So, thank you.
I love the Energizer Bunnies. Um, Religious Life, Nancy Miller. Uh, so far this year, we have had a good number of applicants to receive financial aid from the Angel Fund. And we have awarded over $30,000 this year alone. These are ongoing concerns, and we will have another drive to raise funds to um, supplement what we have in February, and there'll be new brochures. So please keep that good cause in mind. Uh, the Angel Fund is open to the Cedarfield community. That doesn't rule out anybody. Uh, it's primarily uh, used by team members. And uh, if they get into emergency situations involving finances, whether it's due to a hospitalization, a wreck, or just some unexpe unexpected expense, uh, then they apply to us through the chaplain, uh, Trish, keeps everything anonymous, and then it's um, the cause or the need is presented to the Angel Fund Committee, and we vote to award the amount of money. No money goes directly to the individual, it goes to pay the bill. So, any questions? <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Wellness and Leisure, Barbara Rose, who appears not to be here. Oh, thank you, she is. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, our minutes will be attached, but just a few highlights um, about programming. First of all, on November 21st, the focus group will have the doorways talk, and that, that's uh, connected to BCU Hospital and the families of people who are having, um, I'd say, more serious um, surgeries or illnesses can stay there. Um, it's just a wonderful organization. It's been in operation a long time, so we'll all get a little refresher of exactly what's going on there on November 21st. Um, second, um, the comments that the committee were made about the informer changes, and they were all just wonderful, fantastic. Thanks so much to the staff for listening to residents and it just turned out beautifully. It makes it a little longer, but the type and the colors are much more presentable uh, to all residents. Um, another thing was awards to employees. And the committee is asking that resident council and that the informer announce the awards that are given to our employees. So um, we have advise the, well I'm advising resident council right now, um, and uh, we'll do the same to the appropriate staff person. Uh, let's see, oh, we have two new classes, well one new one and one changed one, and the committee members were challenged to advertise by asking friends directly to participate in the new circuit class, which is Mondays at 2 p.m., and in the new walking hour, which is Tuesday afternoons at 3 p.m., meeting at the Red Awning at the end of assisted living. So I'm now challenging you all to ask a friend, not just to lunch or dinner, but to one of or both of these activities. Good luck, and I encourage you to participate. I have done both of them, and they are fantastic opportunities for us. Now, importantly, the Arts Council 
uh, is having their sale to November 29th to December 9th. And this helps defray the expenses of all the wonderful activities in the creative arts. So put those dates, it's in the informer, on your calendar. Uh, there are wonderful Christmas ornaments, I know, and there'll be other wonderful products made by people in the creative arts program here. Uh, pickleball thrive during after aging in October. Uh, we had nine people come and play. The courts were full, and we had a wonderful time, and people are in this cooler weather, can play morning or afternoon, and the sign-ups have started to increase, which is wonderful. It's a, it's a very fun activity. On sports, we need somebody still to um, prepare the sports that will be featured on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, on the big TV in the cafe. And John Ferris, who was doing this, is willing to work with a person uh, to do that. And with his help, it will really be easy, um, especially if you're sports-minded. And I know there are people out here that keep track of it, so I hope someone would contact me and I'll volunteer the committee to give us, me, two ideas, so I'll be following through on that. And the last thing I'm gonna say is a shout out to the November 3rd, that's not that far away, uh, program the, on the Virginia War Memorial Oral History Project. And that's taking oral histories from veterans and veteran spouses and that will be a program to explain that November 3rd in Fellowship Hall at 10 a.m. Thank you so much. Any, quest any questions? Those are all the committees, to my knowledge, that asked to give a report today. I will make an announcement about the Health Services Committee is making a program available at 3.30 this afternoon on the end of life decisions, discussions, and documents. So I hope you'll take just a couple of minutes to refresh yourselves after our meeting is over and come right back in for end of life discussions. What a happy thought on a beautiful day. <laughs> Any other committee reports? For those people who are new to Cedar Field, most of the work of the Residence Council gets done through our committees, and then we hear about the reports here at our, our, at our meeting. Now we have area reps and Robin Smith. I understand I'd like to make a report. Do I see Robin? I don't see Robin from area 20. Oh, here comes Robin. Area 21 currently is uh, all assisted living and health care, but Jan Leeton cannot continue with all of those people. So Robin's going to give you a little talk about it. For, you, um, for those of you who don't know this, we now have 63 people. Okay. We now have 63 people in Area 21. And Jan and I, and uh, Sally is sitting back there with me, she's our co-rep, have decided that we need help. That's the big, nobody else in this room who represents an area, represents an area with 60 people. So we're asked, we've already asked um, Anne if she would take this up with the council to divide us into two sections. We haven't figured out how we're going to do this with the household groups um, because their availability to participate may be more limited. But we want to make sure that everybody in the households and in assisted living are represented. So one of your challenges is to figure out a strategy for that. Um, but our discussions have been limited to talking about we have, at the moment, with all the people moving from independent living, and a lot of you know that because your friends have gone and you've gone with them because you've gone to meals. Um, they, we have, we would like to define at least, take out the people who live on the third floor and separate them from the people who live on the fourth floor. Now on the third floor, 
and are most of the people who've been in assisted living here. Some of the new people have gone on that level. In addition to that, we on the fourth floor is where they did all the remodeling and reshuffling and redoing things. And most of the people who came from either cottages or, or independent living went to the fourth floor. So we are pretty evenly divided between those two floors. However, that does not account for the various households that we don't have feel are well represented. So our strategy is to ask Ann if you all will think about how we can divide the, the, our 63 into a number that includes uh, representation from the, from the various households as well as from assisted living. So that's our primary thing. Uh, I will also say to you that for the most part, our shower problem is much better. Uh, it's not permanently solved, but it, what has been done has been very effective. For most of us that were having problems, we are now able, including myself, to take a shower and not flood the floor. So that's been very helpful. Um, Lacey has talked to us about this, and, and there will be, they're also looking at putting shower doors. Um, and that will make it even more effective. So that's our primary, that's what's primarily going on with us. Large population and shower doors are better. So uh, I think that's all I really have. Although there, our minutes, our report in the newsletter is a little bit longer than that, but you can read that one. Thanks, Robin. Any question of Robin's? Old business, resident on the Pinnacle Board of Directors. Uh, last December, Residence Council voted unanimously to request that we have representation on the board. Then some of us were invited to meet with the board in March and thought there would be a follow-up meeting from that, but no, we were told, no, you will not be getting a member on the board. Then uh, Amy and Chris Henderson and Charlotte Rayleigh and I met in, I believe it was June, to talk about possibly having a small group of residents meet with a small group of board members, begin to know each other as people, realize we're not demons and neither are they, and see if this would help move the idea of having somebody on the board. Uh, then we met again in August, and Chris asked Charlotte and me to put together uh, some topics that we might want discussed but he has described this gathering as possibly either a glass of wine social or a cup of coffee social. And so I'm not sure how you do these topics with standing up, walking around with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, but we are scheduled to be on Halloween. <laughs> so um, the witches will be a performance on that day. So that's the old business about resident on the Pinnacle Board. Any questions of that? New business, addition of Area 22 for assisted living. As Robin just finished telling you, there are now 67 apartments on floors three and four of the wellness building with 60 some, 63 residents, I believe, at the moment. And that is more than any other person. So Jan Leighton and I have talked about splitting assisted living into third floor, and fourth floor and having one rep for each of those areas. I have been in touch with both Brittany and um, Christina Harvey over in healthcare to talk about how to get the healthcare households uh, represented. They are having a meeting at 10 o'clock on Monday, which I will attend and see if we can figure out from there how to get the households uh, involved. But in order to make this change, I need uh, vote from a resident's council um, and somebody to move, I guess Robin, I'd ask you to move, that we add one additional area, would be area 22, to represent the two floor, uh, to represent the fourth floor of assisted living, with area 21 being third floor, area 22 being the fourth floor. Robin? All right, I'll repeat that. 
area 21 to be the third floor of assisted living, also known as Garden Grove, and area 22 to be Garden Grove assisted living. Is there a second? Any discussion? All in favor? Of the voting members, all in favor? Any opposed? It passes unanimously. We now have an area 22. The bylaws committee is in process and I have communicated to Elizabeth Hollow that this might be coming down the line and then we'll see if we can get an area 23 or what will be the result of uh, the healthcare folks. They need to be, they need to be represented as well. And residents council represents all 500 of us here at Cedarfield, but there is a separate residents council for assisted living, and I go to those meetings. Um, and if there is a separate one for the healthcare, I'll be going to those meetings as well. I've been asked to give you folks a few little reminders. One has to do with transportation. Last Saturday evening, several of us were gathering in the town center, ready to go down to a wonderful concert of the Richmond Symphony. Stella, our marvelous driver, had gotten the big bus all up and ready at the front and warmed up. There were 11 people signed up to go on the bus. Guess how many of us were there? Four. While Cedarfield is charging those of you who sign up for transportation but do not go, they're charging you for the four dollars. Um, it really would be helpful if you have given away your ticket or just decided not to go, if you'd be sure to let the concierge know at least. Uh, if it's earlier in the week, you could let the appropriate person, either Mariah Robinson or Wellness and Lifestyles people know, uh, but it would make it better. Stella did come back for the small group of us in a much smaller vehicle, which was nice. The same thing happens with classes or events. If you sign up for a class or an event, often there is a wait list. But if you decide not to go or you get sick, um, that means nobody on the wait list gets contacted to take your place and it's disappointing to the person who's put together the time of trouble. So again, same thing. If you're not going to be able to attend, please take a minute to get yourself off the list. Last but not least, cell phones. Evidently, some of you have cell phones and you open up apps and you use them, but you never close them. This causes your cell phones to be greatly sluggish. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, after this meeting, ask a neighbor or a friend what that means, or ask Mariah Robinson. Uh, she can help you with closing the apps. That will make your phones work better. That will make it easier to get to your channel 974 to see what's happening around the campus for the day. Our next meeting is the combined November-December meeting on November 29th. So it's a little different. It's the last Thursday of the month of November, same time, two o'clock, same lovely space, Fellowship Hall. I wish you all a happy Halloween. Oh, no, 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 we have another question. Uh, need a microphone at the back for Barbara. And then we have another question with um, Jacqueline Chaplin, if you want to get it. Um, He's taking Jacqueline first. For new residents as well as ones who've been here for quite a while, if I could ask for a favor, and that is when you borrow the carts from Parkview, please return them to Parkview up against the wall where they should be versus right outside the door. And right now there's the one that's supposed to be upstairs that's downstairs. And when you borrow the shopping carts, don't leave them up on the third floor. Bring them back to where you got them from. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline, for a friendly reminder. Barbara Rose has a question. Uh, yes, I was unclear, um, and my mind did work fast enough. On this meeting, October 31st, regarding Pinnacle Living, is that with Red, just the four, Charlotte. That is with Amy, Chris, Charlotte, and me. And no board member, just Chris. It's to talk about refining the list of topics and refining how we might do 
a small meeting with board members and residents. And have you yet respond, have any response from the letter you sent to the chair, I think, of the board in June in response to the first round of communications? No, and she's no longer chair of the board. Ms. Shirley Kaufman is now chair of the board. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the questions. And oh, another question up here with Cheryl Lynn. Uh, I noticed when they finally redid the hallway on the second floor, the evacuation map next to the elevator never ever got replaced. And the others in D-Wing are now facing south, but the arrow on them points, is in the southern direction, but it says north. So the map got changed, turned around, but the arrow didn't. <laughs> I was going to say, and I cannot tell you how many people on the communications committee looked at the new maps and said they were right. Um, have you reported this to facilities? Um, I think I reported it to Roger on the stage. I'm not sure. Which, I wasn't sure which committee it was. I, and I mentioned it to Roger, and I think he said he mentioned it to Lacey, but I don't know who did the maps. I will mention it to Lacey, but it's always best if you see it, fill out a work order online. That system works divinely. I had uh, something wrong in my apartment the other day and somebody was meeting with me and all of a sudden tap tap on the door and here was facilities to take care of my two requests I had. So the, I'm having good luck with the online uh, work order system. Although I learned today, if you have a problem with the FOB, and I've had two of this past week, we do not put that on the work order system. We call that directly to Darlene Green because then she has to call Steve or Jenny or whom. I, I don't know who does FOBs, but anyway, that doesn't go through the work order system. Any further business to come before this August group? Happy Halloween, happy Thanksgiving, see you on the 29th, and thank you for all you do. We're adjourned. And come back at 3.30.